So, we begin a new module in this lecture, uh, one on exergy. Uh, the first thing that we are going to do is to motivate why uh, we need uh, to introduce a new concept uh, which we are calling exergy. Um, there are some textbooks uh, which also uh, refer to exergy as availability, um, both mean the same thing. Uh, exergy is I think uh, modern usage, so we will uh, adopt uh, the term exergy. Uh, why do we need uh, uh, a new concept? Uh, there are a few reasons. The most important one is uh, given here. Okay, so let's say that you know we have a uh, piston cylinder mechanism, say something like this, and uh, there is a ga gas or some other working substance inside, and it undergoes an expansion process and produces some work. Now. One of the things that we would uh, like to be able to do is to actually come up with, um, uh, uh, with an estimate of uh, let us say an efficiency for this process. Okay? And as I mentioned in the previous module, we would actually like this, um, um, this metric or this efficiency uh, to be in some manner connected to the amount of entropy that is generated in the universe as a result of this process. So, that is uh, the total of entropy generated, uh, that is the sum of entropy generated due to internal irreversibility plus external irreversibility. So, we want, uh, we want a performance metric for or non flow processes like that. You may recall uh, from the uh, previous course that we have not actually defined efficiencies for, um, for individual processes. We have defined efficiency for a cycle, uh, COP for a reverse cycle, but uh, not efficiencies for individual processes except isentropic efficiency. I will come to that in a minute. Okay? So, we would like to be uh, able to do this. So, basically what we would like to do is, so uh, a system uh, starts from a given state 1 and goes to a final state let us say let us say 2. Okay. Now, we would like to find out what would be the ideal process between these two states. Okay. So, the work developed during that process would then form uh, the basis of uh, defining say an efficiency. Okay. So, that is something that we would like to be able to do for non-cyclic uh, non -cyclic processes, whether it is a flow process or a non-flow process, it does not matter. For instance, um, we looked at the example of, uh, of a mixing chamber in the, in, the, uh, in the previous module. So, we had uh, flow, two streams coming in, one stream going out. Okay. Now, how do we define an efficiency for the mixing chamber? Okay, that actually is um, quite interesting and it is not possible to do this from uh, an energy perspective. Okay? So, what we need to do is we need to uh, come up with a way by which we can define an efficiency for this device based on the amount of entropy that the process generates in the universe. Okay? That is what we would like to do. We already pointed out uh, to the fact that this is a highly irreversible process due to the, uh, I mean mixing is a highly irreversible process and so there is generation of entropy because of this internal irreversibility. If we allow heat transfer to take place, then there could be external irreversibility irreversibility also. We saw another example involving external irreversibility. So, uh, we would like to be able to define an ideal process for this case. So, we know all the initial states. So, this is an initial state, this is an initial state, this is a final state. So, uh, what would be the ideal process in going from these two initial states to this final state? And based on that, we can then define an efficiency. Okay. Now, uh, as I have written here, energy based performance metrics do not account for entropy generated in the universe. Okay. So, let us see what we mean, uh, what I mean by this. Okay. So, let us see. Let me just erase these things here. Okay. So, you may recall um, uh, that we uh, wrote down a simple uh, block diagram of uh, of an engine. So, this is an engine which receives a certain amount of heat, let us say Qh from a high temperature reservoir, rejects uh, an amount of heat Qc to the low temperature reservoir, produces an amount of work equal to W. Let us say it executes a cyclic process and we uh, wrote down the expression for efficiency as 1 minus uh, Qc over Qh. Again, 
when it executes a cyclic process. If it does not execute a cyclic process, then the efficiency would simply be W over QH. Okay? And in that case, there would be no upper limit on the efficiency mandated by the second law. If it does not execute a cyclic process, if it executes a cyclic process, then this is the uh, expression for efficiency. And there is of course, an upper limit, which is the Corno uh, limit on, on this, on the value for this efficiency. Now, uh, two engines, let us say we have two engines, both of which are supplied with the same amount of heat QH and they produce the same amount of work rejecting the same amount of heat. However, one engine is given uh, QH from a reservoir at let us say 1400 Kelvin, another one is given the same amount of QH from a reservoir at let us say 800 Kelvin or 1000 Kelvin. The efficiency for both these engines would be the same. However, for the engine that receives heat from the high temperature, higher temperature reservoir, the amount of external irreversibility is higher. So, although its efficiency based on energy is the same, we certainly do not uh, uh, like the fact that uh, there is more external irreversibility associated with the engine which is receiving heat from a higher temperature reservoir. So, which then uh, points to the requirement that we need to develop a metric which uh, will take into account the amount of entropy that is generated in the universe as a result of operation of this engine. Okay. So, energy based performance metrics do not uh, necessarily account for entropy generated in the universe. Now, exergy, uh, expression for exergy that we are going to develop and the notion of exergy meets these requirements. It is quite general and allows us to calculate a limiting value, meaning what is the maximum work uh, possible for this process. So, it uh, allows us to calculate a limiting value against which the actual performance of any device executing a cyclic or non-cyclic process may be compared. Remember, here this is a, this engine is executing a cyclic process. So, even for this, we can come up with a uh, uh, definition of efficiency which takes into account the amount of entropy that is generated in the universe. So, exergy in that sense is quite general. It can be applied to any uh, process, number one. Number two, it allows us to calculate the maximum work that can be obtained as a result of executing the process between these and uh, the two given end states. Whether it is cyclic or non-cyclic, it does not matter. Okay? So, it is very, very general. Now, um, uh, let us turn to the notion of isentropic efficiency. You may recall that we defined isentropic efficiency as let us say in the case of a power producing device as actual work divided by isentropic work. So, these were situations. So, we, we defined isentropic efficiency for a turbine, a compressor, a nozzle and a diffuser. Okay. So, these are situations for which um, the ideal process is actually an isentropic process. So, we compare the uh, actual performance against uh, the performance that would have been realized had the working substance executed uh, an isentropic process. Okay. So, consequently this uh, applicability of isentropic uh, efficiency is restricted to adiabatic de devices. Okay. So, if it is non adiabatic, so for example, for the same turbine or compressor, if the uh, turbine or compressor uh, actually loses heat to the surroundings, which is very realistic, then how do we uh, define an isentropic efficiency? We cannot because the basic process is not an adiabatic process. So, we cannot define an isentropic process as the, uh, as the ideal process for this case because heat loss is taking place. Okay. And we cannot uh, extend the notion of isentropic efficiency uh, for devices such as mixing chambers, heat exchangers and as I said even turbines or compressors uh, when they actually have uh, exchange of heat with the surroundings, meaning they are losing heat to the surroundings. So, isentropic efficiency is very, very limited in its utility and so it cannot be used to meet our requirements. So, we want a very general uh, definition of an efficiency which can be used for calculating uh, limiting value and is applicable to cyclic as well as non-cyclic processes and flow as well as non-flow processes. To develop uh, an expression for such an efficiency, we start with the notion of exergy. First, let us define uh, a reference state or what is called a dead state. Okay? So, dead state 
we denote the uh, pressure at the dead state as P naught, temperature as T naught, velocity is 0, elevation above the datum as 0. Okay. Now, when a system exists in this state, it is not possible to develop any work from this system. Okay. Normally, ambient state at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kappa is taken to be the dead state. So, when we have a system which is at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kappa, it is not possible to develop any work from this system. Okay. That is called the dead state. So, exergy of a system uh, at a given state. So, we have a system which is at a certain state, maybe some other some pressure, temperature and uh, say elevation, velocity, all these things are known. So, it is at a given state and the exergy of the system at this state is defined as the maximum theoretical work. This is very important, maximum theoretical work that can be developed as the system goes from the given state to the dead state. So, let us if you if you label this state as 1, then as the system goes from state 1 to the dead state which is denoted as state 0, the maximum work that can be developed uh, during this process is actually called the exergy of the system at that state. So, exergy of the system at this state is defined as the maximum work that can be developed as the system goes from state 1 to the dead state. Of course, it follows very clearly that uh, the exergy of the system at dead state is 0 because uh, we defined that uh, no work can be developed from a system which is at the dead state. So, exergy of a system is uh, at the dead state is 0. So, the exergy of a system that is not at the dead state at any other state for instance is non-zero, but is it positive or negative or can it be both? That is the next question that we have to ask. Okay? It is non-zero, but is it positive or negative? That is uh, that's what we will uh, discuss next. So, here um, we have um, uh, four examples of uh, systems which are at uh, uh, state different from the dead state and they are executing a process to go towards the dead state. Okay? So, here we have a system which is at the same temperature as the uh, ambient temperature, but at a pressure higher than the ambient pressure. So, in this case, we can actually place a weight here and as the system expands to the ambient pressure, the weight is lifted, which means positive work is being done by the system. So, the exergy of the system is positive. Now, in this case, we have a system which is at the same pressure as the ambient pressure. Now, by looking at these four cases, we have not really lost any generality. So, this is without any loss of generality. It is sufficient if you look at this and we can actually then make a statement about the sign uh, for exergy. Okay? So, here we have a system which is at the same pressure as the ambient pressure, but at a temperature greater than the ambient temperature. So, maybe this is uh, uh, this gas contained in a piston cylinder assembly at let us say uh, 500 Kelvin. Now, I can use this as a high temperature reservoir and operate an engine between this high temperature reservoir and ambient and develop some work from this. That means, the exergy of this system is positive because work can be developed as it executes, uh, as it supplies um, uh, heat to this engine and the, and the engine will stop working when this system reaches the ambient temperature. Okay? So, we start at a temperature greater than T naught and we supply uh, heat to this engine, it develops work and then the engine stops developing work when the uh, system reaches the ambient temperature. This was discussed in the previous course uh, in connection with second law under the uh, topic of finite reservoirs. Okay? So, reservoirs uh, in the context of heat engines may be infinite or finite. So, this was uh, discussed under the uh, uh, context of finite reservoirs. Okay? So, the exergy for these two cases is positive. Notice that here the pressure of the system was greater than the ambient pressure to begin with and here the temperature of the system was greater than the ambient temperature to begin with. For both these cases, exergy of the system turns out to be greater than 0. So, here we discuss a case when the pressure, same example as this, but the pressure is less than ambient pressure, temperature is same as ambient temperature. In this case, by placing uh, weights like this, as the system goes towards ambient pressure, so the piston moves up in this case and the pressure of the system increases. So, as it goes towards the ambient pressure, these uh, weights are lifted in a gravitational field. So, work is done by the system, which means 
exergy is greater than 0 in this case. <coughs> so, even when the system is at a pressure less than the ambient pressure, the exergy is still positive because we can still develop positive work as the system goes towards the dead state. So, here we have the counterpart of this example where the temperature of the system is initially less than T naught, pressure is same as P naught. In this case, we can actually use this as a low temperature reservoir and operate a direct engine between the ambient and this low temperature reservoir. Okay. So, the, this engine by virtue of the fact that this is a low temperature reservoir can draw heat from the ambient reject heat to the um, and, uh, to the reservoir at uh, lower temperature than the ambient and produce an amount of work which is positive and so exergy of this is also positive so as this uh, as this device as the system goes towards the dead state it develops uh, a positive amount of work which means that the exergy of the system is positive okay so, you can see that whether the systems are at temperatures and pressures above or below the ambient, in all these cases a positive amount of work is developed as the system goes towards the dead state, which means that exergy of the system, we can generalize and conclude from this that the exergy of the system, exergy of a system is always positive and non-zero so long as it is not at the dead state. It is not non-zero so long as it is not at the dead state and it is always positive. Now, let us de develop an expression for exergy. Okay. So, if you uh, take any of these systems that we have considered without any loss of generality, we may write first law for the system like this delta E equal to Q minus W for the system. Okay. So, the system is initially at state 1 and it goes towards the dead state which is the final state denoted 0. Okay. So, let us take each one of these terms in this uh, in this expression one by one and um, uh, develop uh, the expression further. Okay? So, delta E uh, for the system may be written as final minus initial. So, E0 minus E1. Remember, the system goes from an initial state 1 to a final state 0. So, delta e, e is final minus initial. So, E0 minus E1. And by definition, the total energy is uh, the sum of the internal energy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy. So, internal energy plus uh, kinetic energy plus potential energy and by definition the dead state is at 0 velocity and 0 uh, elevation above the datum. So, these two terms go to 0 and this is the total energy at the initial state. So, we may write delta E for the system like this. Let us take W system next. We decompose W system into two uh, parts. One is called the useful part. The other one is the work done again in displacing the atmosphere. So, if you look at uh, say uh, a system like this, a piston cylinder mechanism either this or this, as work is being developed, the atmosphere is also being pushed aside. So, there are two things that are happening. One is the weight is being lifted and atmosphere is also being pushed aside. So, we uh, must do some work in pushing aside the atmosphere. So, the system must do some work in pushing as aside the atmosphere and it also does work while lifting the weight and the same is true in this case also. Okay? So, the network developed by the system is the sum of these two work spent in pushing aside the atmosphere, displacing the atmosphere and the work done uh, in raising a weight. Okay? So, and that is what we have done here. So, we have written the W cis as, uh, as uh, the sum of two terms. This is the work uh, done in displacing the atmosphere. This is the useful work. This is called useful work because this is what can be used to lift a weight. So, that is denoted with the subscript U. Okay? So, this is W U plus P 0 times V 0 minus V 1 because this is just displacement work. So, uh, the exergy of a system, if you uh, recall, we defined exergy of a system as the maximum theoretical work that can be developed as the system goes from the given state to the dead state, which means that exergy of the system is the maximum value for this quantity here, W max for this 
I am sorry, W max is the exergy of the system. So, we need to uh, develop an expression for W u max.